Okay, team, I would like everybody to leave behind who you are, leave behind your identities. We're going to go on a secret history together. We're going to become somebody else. We're going to go on a journey of a disrespectful relationship between, between Tembisa, a patient, and between a health worker, health worker mobile. Okay, and I'd like to ask half of you to become Tembisa. So, from Robert, this half of the room, you are all together one person, the patient Tembisa. This half of the room is all going to become the patient, the, the health provider mobile. Okay? What we're going to be doing is talking to each other. The two of you are going to be talking to each other, interacting with each other in a normal, ordinary way around the story, around the secret history that I'm going to reveal to you in stages. Okay? I'm going to be interrupting your discussion and asking you how you're feeling and what do you need at various stages of the story. So let me start by asking you, Tembisa. Let me describe who you are. Tembisa, you are 15. You are a 15-year-old primigravid at, at term. And I will be with you. We, we arrived at 6.30 in the evening in Labour Ward with a heavy show and mild contractions, each about 10, 15 minutes apart. We're in our school uniform, and we do not have a bag. Tembisa, let's put Tembisa's name at the top. How are we feeling? Scared. We're feeling scared? Vulnerable. Vulnerable. Can you t tell us a little bit more about that feeling, that feeling of being vulnerable? Being 15 in uniform and needing to be cared for in labour. You need to be cared for in labour, okay? You, what kind of care do we need, Tembisa? I want to have my baby. You want to have your baby, but what, what kind, you want care to have the baby delivered, yeah? yeah? Mother, yes, Tembisa? The motherly care. You want the quality of motherliness yes. in that care. You want that care to not just be about technically getting the baby out, mm. but you want something. You want a mother, mm. a feeling of mo being mothered. Beautiful. What else, Timbisa? I need someone to actually help me because I don't know what's going to happen. I haven't delivered before, so I need that support. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, you need to. So, so I'm also to be so with you. I'm particularly afraid of my father because he works at the church and he's been very, he speaks a lot about getting pregnant without being married. And I'm afraid what's going to happen now that I've got this baby. Any other feelings and needs? I'm yeah. confused. You confused? I'm yeah. Not sure whether I want this baby. Or... You're not sure. I'm not sure. That's okay. why I didn't even bring the baby. Okay. So part of your okay. So okay. Excellent. So we call this ambivalence. <laughs> okay. So when we're not sure about how we want things to happen, sometimes our behaviours show that that we're not sure that we actually should we have this baby. Should we keep it, or maybe it's not the right thing, but actually I want this baby. I'm not, I don't know. Yeah? I'm also feeling pain. I'm having pain. You're having, we're feeling physical pain. I need help with that? Yeah? What is going to happen now? I'm feeling like I'm on the edge of a huge thing. What, how am I going to do this? I wonder what my father is going to say, because I know he'll ask me who is the father of the baby. Already I don't have an answer because there's denied pregnancy. Okay. Okay, thanks, Timbisa. I'd like to move on to, to Health Worker Mobile. We are all Health Worker Mobile now, okay? We've been in, on labor ward duty now for over 12 hours, all right? Our supervisor has been in meetings all week, meetings, meetings, meetings. We haven't been able to talk to him. Um, and tonight our mother-in-law is coming for dinner. Okay. <laughs> now this Tembisa girl arrives. Just look at her. She's in her uniform. What? She's got nothing, no bag, no nothing. Look at this face. Look at her face. <laughs> this 14-15 this year old, this young girl. Health worker mobile, how, what are we feeling? <coughs> Tired. Tired, yeah? Feeling angry. Angry about what? Um, our management is just in meetings all the time. They don't listen to our needs for more stuff. We overwhelm the work. So, uh, yeah, we're uh, you're angry that no one's yeah. addressing our needs, yeah, right? Meetings. Me what are meetings? Meetings when we are got blisters under our feet working for 12 hours. Yes. And this teenager's arriving at this time. I mean, I mean it's uh, half an hour before the end yeah. of the show. I've got an appointment with my. Yeah, I've got plans. I've got post we've got a personal life and now she's coming to to interrupt disrupt yes. I am irritable because this is the time to make my report and hand over and go home. And this is the teenager that is coming just now. And you can tell she's a problem one, hey? You can tell by the attitude. Look look at that face. This is not gonna be easy and quick. Yeah, she's always oh, criticizing she our cooking. Yeah, she's always criticizing. We've got to go home and cook now. Okay, can you talk to each other, please? You need to take this girl in. Health worker mobile. Why are you worried about me? It's my baby. Oh, she's got attitude, hey? She's got attitude. She's a rude one, this one, hey? She's rude. You need to listen. Okay. Yeah, I, we didn't, 
give up. You're going to do what you're going to look after yourself. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Okay, remember these feelings. I want you to remember what you're feeling right now and what you're needing right now. Okay, remember it. Feel it in your bodies. Feel it inside your minds. The next part of the story is uh, we want to ask you first to stand up and to cross over to the other side of the room. Okay. So, Tembisa, um, where's... Where, so, if you were on Tembisa's side, you're now on Health Worker Mobile's side. We're swapping. We are now Tembisa. Okay, Tembisa, Health Worker Mobile. All right? Take a seat, please. Okay, Tembisa, now we're feeling severe pain, especially in our back. We didn't realize you'd get back pain with, with labor. And our mother and our boyfriend, they're not answering our text messages. Okay? With the next contraction we have, we vomit everywhere. Everywhere. And the clinic, all over the bed. And the clinic's got no linen savers. Tembisa, what are we feeling and what do we need? We go back to Tembisa. What are we feeling, Tembisa? Helpless. 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 Embarrassed. There's more, that shame again. What else? Angry. angry. What are we angry about? Because, uh, oh, that 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 oh, yes, yes. And that is uh, also neglected. Me. We're feeling neglected by the nurses. Our, our people are not answering the phone. So, what does that feel? Feel abandoned almost. Yes. Left. Yes. Powerless, out of control. Sick. Yes. Feel sick. What kind of sick? Physical or emotional? Physical and emotional because I'm, I'm vomiting and nobody's attending to me. Yeah? You're feeling regretful about? I just wish this happened. Look how I got to myself into this situation. So there's almost a feeling of blaming oneself, right? Okay. Health worker mobile. We get a text message from our colleague. She's meant to take over from us now at 7, right? Sorry, she'll be half an hour late. And this is the third time she's done it to us this month. Okay? So sorry, I will be half an hour late. Uh, she's only four centimeters dilated, and there's vomit everywhere. And we suggest that she walks up and down the corridor to get this labor going, but she just looks sullen and she ignores us. How are we feeling? Angry, angry at your colleague. Because yeah. she keeps on doing this. Yeah? I'm angry with the, 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 the teenager too for vomiting all over me. No limit savers. So that's what we need. We need to just get out of here, right? That's what we need. We need to leave this trouble behind. Yes? I feel like Kathy because she's refusing to go up and down. No, we know what's right for her, and she's not cooperating. She's uncooperative. And she should vomit in the toilet now. Absolutely. What do we need? I need someone to clean this, but I'm not going to clean this. I'm not cleaning. It's not my job. I'm a health worker. I'm not a cleaner. I don't care the cleaner's gone home. So, do you, so tell her, she must maybe clean it up, give it. Should we show her where the mop is? The mop's over there, my girlie. You must go clean it up. Oh. And there's... Oh, wait, I'm yet to, I'm yet to, to give thanks to my... Then you should have come with your boyfriend or your mother, I'm not a cleaner. Let's give us a little bit of our home. You should have come with your boyfriend. My boyfriend can't clean. That is not my problem. You should clean it. Sister, I can't even wake up and beg my house. How are you not pregnant? Listen, don't make your problem be my problem. You should have come with your mother or your boyfriend. I didn't impregnate you. Where is the You need to go and clean. Where is the day? I don't have 
airtime now? Why do you have airtime? Sister, when you speak to me for me, why get you pregnant in the first place? Because you are still schooling. Oh, I'm not going to have a doctor. Okay. If you are complaining about pain when you deliver, they won't be pain anymore. So it means you will clean once you deliver. Because at the end of the day, you will clean, not me. No way, you are not Okay, okay, guys, excellent. Time out. Time out. Excellent. Okay, I'd like. There's a lot of horrible energy in the room. Can you feel it? <laughs> Let's take a deep breath. We're going to take four slow breaths and we're going to come back into ourselves. Okay, we're going to leave Tembisa and Health Worker Morba behind. When you breathe in and out, just notice the experience of the breath. Notice as your lungs fill with air and the movement of your diaphragm. Notice all the physical sensations of the breath, the sound, the temperature of the air, the movement of your body, the oxygenation of your blood. Okay. Can you tell us what did you notice about that experience of being Tembisa and being the health worker? The interaction alone is draining. It's exhausting. Yes. It actually takes energy out of you. And that's, that's a problem both for a health worker and for a patient, right? So it's, it's actually emotionally exhausting and physically exhausting. That's, I don't think that's often said. I think that's a very important point. It actually takes more energy to be horrible <laughs> than it does to be nice. <laughs> Since I'm wasting all that argument on the assess the patient, read the file, wrote down the diagnosis, manage the patient while still waiting for my colleague, so it was a waste of time. Completely inefficient. Not only is it exhausting, but there's so much else you could have done in that same period of time. Absolutely. It's also toxic. It's toxic to both of you because you're angry and that. You're not feeling good about yourself. It's it's not straight away, you're starting on the wrong note. Yeah, yeah. Sorry? It's, it's not helping anyone. Mm. Okay, so it's not making the health worker yeah. feel better no, it's in itself to. Or, yeah, yeah. It comes to the release that the patient is always stressed. What do you mean? Can you tell us? Services. Yeah. And yet, she's not getting it done. So, what do, what do you mean by she's saying she's always right. right? I don't understand. She's, she's here to deliver her baby. And yet the nurses are scolding her, you know, all these things, instead of what I understand should be, like the nurse should have just done this. Okay, so am I right in understanding you? Are you saying that our professional duty is no matter what's going on, with us, that is the priority. Our service is the priority. Whether there's no cleaner, or we're late, or our colleagues abused us, or our... So, so that, in terms of the hierarchy of importance, that that ha has to happen, has to come first. Um, it's yeah. Also, a very hostile environment, and I feel totally unwelcome in this environment. Both the healthcare worker and, and the patient okay. don't want to be there. So, yeah. So we're talking about an environment, or even a culture. You know how some wards, or some institutions, or some some buildings, or some workplaces have a different culture from another. It's got nothing to do with whether you come from Zimbabwe or Limpopo or, or Western Cape. But the culture, the toxicness of the culture is, is, um, is something that, that the people there are contributing to. Yeah? And the danger of only leaving one midwife to attend to all the patients, because if there were other colleagues, they would have intervened and treated the patient uh, differently. Because I don't think we can respond in the same way to the but do you think the situation is a reflection of reality? Yes. yes. This isn't this isn't a makeup nonsense no. thing. This is what happens. Okay. There are no linen savers. The cleaner didn't come today, or whatever the story. You work by yourself. You work by yourself. You're feeling alone. You're not feeling supported. Yeah. And what what contributes to that loss of respect? This interaction of one another. Okay, so, there, so you, you're picking up that there's a kind of a cycle, a vicious cycle that contributes to this toxic environment. And there's an escalation of, it's actually a form of violence, isn't it? 
And you, could, you often see it in violence scenarios, whether it's any kind of aggressive interaction with people, that something starts, you respond more aggressively, then I don't feel heard, so I need to shout louder, so I get more aggressive, and it, it escalates, this, 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 inter, this vicious cycle of violence. So that, that, that's, that is happening in both directions. So, um, and why do you think this is happening? Why do you think, if you say this is typical or very common, and we've seen this, what, what is happening? Why is it happening like this? Okay, so we have, we're unsupported by our colleagues. We're taken for granted by our managers. We have teenage pregnancies and, and teenagers come in. But why are we, what's, what's going on here? We're just coming into a labor ward situation. What is happening? It's much more than just the labor ward, isn't it? There's a system breakdown. Yeah. There's a system breakdown all the way from management to our supplies, to our human resource uh, challenges in terms of numbers and skills. Uh, we've done enough education. The teenagers are still falling pregnant. We're offering family planning. So it's, we have to somehow bring about behavior change that we're failing to do. So, there's a whole lot going on. I think it's a combination of uh, pressure from the workplace. If this situation was a private, she would vomit and would feel it very badly. Mm -hmm. I don't want to spoil it. So, you think there are economic factors at play? Yeah, I so you I'd make her aid if I was a special. Okay, so that speaks to the issues of power and powerlessness. Okay, so if you're wealthy enough to afford medical aid, you have a different status. And you're seen, in, you're seen as in a different way as if you don't. Um, and, we, and, and as health workers, we, can, we tap into that, that unfortunate uh, prejudice. Um, yeah? I also think that uh, poor parenting. The reason why I say this, as much as Sammy says pregnant, she's still a child. She's 15 years old. Uh, the parents are not there, you know? So I'm not okay with this. Somebody should have been there for her, wrong as she is, yeah. but you know, even teachers could have accompanied or whoever, yeah. but I feel like Utsen Lisa, you know, is just feeling everything because I'm saying no matter how wrong I am, I'm still a child, I still need that support. Absolutely, and I think when we see adolescent mothers come in, we often feel this terrible sense, this is a child. Yes. And it makes us feel anxious. This is an abandoned child, and what's going to be happening? And what's happened before now? Um, what? What? And, and sometimes, because we don't know how to parent, to be a parent in that situation. And you spoke about needing that motherliness. We aren't able to provide that motherliness for her because we're so worried. Where's her mother? Where's her person? She's now to be a mother. But what she's needing is our mothering. I mean, that's exactly what you said, um, that you're needing a parenting figure. But quite often in health, the health side of things, we take on other roles. Uh, the policeman, the detective, <laughs> the teacher, <laughs> you know. And we don't, we, we forget that what we need to do is be, a, is be a health worker. But there's something magical about being a health worker, and that is we can actually provide that mothering in that, in that role. Um, but you can't if you're at, the, at a shop counter and you're, you're, at, you're selling poloni. <laughs> that's, you can't, that's not part of your role. But as a health worker, we have access to that magic. Um, I think the other thing we need to, to think about is that both characters are bringing into this interaction a whole lot of baggage. They're each carrying a very heavy suitcase that's bulging with bits of broken, dirty clothes sticking out. <laughs> Things that needing mending, things that needing sorting out, the health worker's baggage, the, the Tembisa's baggage, what got her pregnant, where are her people, what's happening, what does she want? To, and what are, we, what are our responsibilities with respect to our own baggage as health workers? Because we've got baggage, we've got, uh, we've, we've got all these problems, right? Yes? We need to put it behind us. We need to try and leave it at home and move forward. Here's healthcare workers, and for that moment in time, we'll be healthcare workers. Unfortunately, we have to deal with the baggage in time that we have before or after. Okay, so we have a suggestion here that that baggage be compartmentalized. Mm -hmm. 
that be, it, it be located somewhere else, and that in time it is dealt in another time, and that we have to be in the moment, right now, irrespective of our baggage. Because, as you mentioned, if we bring our baggage into the room, it's exhausting because we're carrying it. If you have to carry a bulging suitcase, you're going to be sore <laughs> and exhausted. But it's not so easy to leave one's baggage behind. Absolutely, we need to give priority to our own mental well-being because, because be caring for the carer is not a soft issue. The instrument of healing, sure, might be the antibiotic, might be the antiretroviral, might be the fact that you are referring a person who's not progressing on the partogram, etc treating the anemia, but the real instrument of making somebody feel well in themselves is the relationship they have with us. And that is the instrument of care, and that instrument is how we are in ourselves, is our personality and how we are in ourselves. So, so prioritizing our own mental well-being is, is not a soft issue, it's essential. It's like if you are a surgeon, well, you know, you're not going to say, some days I'm going to have a clean scalpel. That scalpel has to be sharp and sterilized every time because that's your instrument. Okay? We need to remember that ourselves, we are our instruments. Yes, I am. I've also uh, picked up, or I'm just making a suggestion mm. to say, let us not confuse uh, a client and our own children. I felt bad as a midwife. I thought now Timbisa is my child. Well, she's not, she's my client. I need to do my work. Absolutely. Yeah. And that is similarly a kind of separation that you're suggesting. And, and sometimes just being aware, this reminds me of my child. Or this could be my child. Or this could be me when I was a teenager and I was pregnant. Just being aware and noticing in ourselves, those things can help us separate out, okay? But I don't have to behave in this way. I can choose to be with her in another way. So just noticing that anxiety in ourselves. So this is an exercise in noticing what people are feeling and identifying what people are needing. I'm going to go back. I yeah. just want to make a the point. There's also coming with the teaching and family medicine. During your consultation with this patient, you as a health worker need to self-reflect as that consultation goes on. <coughs> and it's very important to self-reflect while you're with this patient because then you actually change your method of, of talking to this patient and what you're saying to this patient. Absolutely. And I think self-reflection is another word for just noticing mm -hmm. and being mindful because we don't want to overanalyze while we're talking to somebody. We want to be able to be there for the person. Why but just to notice, this person is making me angry, or this person is reminding me of my sister who's got HIV, or when I was pregnant as a, just notice it. You don't have to, just the act of noticing how one feels. I feel overwhelmed. I feel like my boss is abusing me. I feel like my colleague is taking me for granted. I feel scared. Of, I feel scared what's going to happen in this labor of this patient of mine. Simply noticing that means that that feeling doesn't have to overtake you. It means that you can have access to other processes in your mind for dealing with the problem. You can free yourself up. Okay, we need to move on to the next part of the training. Thank you.